button, leave meeting. Okay, so we are starting our first uh, session, our first Braille Sense 6 evening session, and we're going to be with you for the next five weeks. This is a, a sight and sound technology um, initiative, very kindly supported by our friends at Salvus in Korea, and uh, in particular by Jenny Axler, who's come along tonight. It's very early in the morning for Jenny. I believe it's 4 a.m., Jenny, where you are? It is 4 a.m. Well, we I've really had my appreciate coffee. So we're had you, good to go. <laughs> we really appreciate you getting up. I know some people are uh, in the UK. I think we have uh, Kerry from New Zealand, which I think is 8 a.m. And for us, it's a very civilized 8 p.m. But we really are grateful that Jenny has joined us today because Jenny's going to be with us for this session and she's also going to be with us for the last session. And today we're talking about uh, this really is for people who've come from the Braille Sense U2 models or earlier to the Braille Sense 6. So if you skipped the Polaris, this session is for you. And even if you didn't skip the Polaris and you just wanna have a listen or you wanna ask some general questions at the end, this one's for you. But before we do that, I just wanna uh, briefly go through the, uh, the content for the next five weeks, give you a sense of what we are going to be doing. And of course, as you will have read on the blurb about these sessions, you can attend whatever you want. Uh, or, or, or not, as the case may be. So it's completely up to you what you choose to attend. And if you can't attend to some uh, something, it will be on our uh, YouTube and podcast page very shortly after. So today, um, which is the first session on the 14th of October, and by the way, World Sight Day, so happy World Sight Day to everybody. I think that's uh, significant that we're starting this on World Sight Day, completely accidental on the part of, of myself and my colleagues at Sight and Sound. Uh, today, as I said a moment ago, we're going to be looking at uh, the U2, skipping to Braille Sense 6 and what you will enjoy if you were to do that. And this came back from feedback from uh, some sessions we ran during the summer. People were saying, I want to know more about the differences between the very older Braille Sense models and the current uh, Braille Sense 6. Next Thursday, we're going to talk about finding, downloading, and listening to podcasts. And this is uh, something that's going to be coming very soon to Braille Sense 6 devices. Very exciting feature, and um, I'm looking forward to talking a little bit about that next week. On the 28th of October, we're going to talk about language profiles and downloading voices and how to use language profiles. And I think, you know, this will be an interesting one because we've had a lot of queries about this and how it all works. And I think language profiles are fantastic. And I know that uh, Jenny was certainly drove that one with the team in Korea. And it's really nice what has been created. We've been setting it up in schools already and kids love it. So you'll get to see that if you come uh, in two weeks time. On the 4th of November, we're going to show something called Wiki Search, which is also new. You won't have seen yet. And this is all about uh, accessing information quickly, looking up words in a document, uh, doing searches, um, getting access to information very fast without ha ever having to leave the application that you're in. And we'll talk a lot more about that. And on the final night that we're all together, the 11th of November, it's an apps extravaganza. And Jenny's going to come back. And we're also going to put a little panel together of people who are using Android apps on the Braille Sense 6 and ask you what's your favorite apps and maybe ask our panel to maybe show us some of the apps they use. And uh, we'll talk a little bit, give you some strategies for how to use uh, the Android sc uh, screen reader in Braille Sense 6, because of course it is slightly different to the traditional Braille Sense 6 user interface. And uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun, but of course we want to have lots of fun throughout. These sessions are informal and they have been designed to give you a sense of what's going on on the Braille Sense 6. We're not covering anything by any means, and there may be things that we're asked about during the sessions that we might try and cover at the end of each session. So there is some Q&A time at the end of each session if you'd like to ask questions. So before I switch uh, on the unmute so that people can unmute and, and chat to us if they wish, uh, I'll just tell you that there's a lot of information on the Sight and Sound YouTube channel and podcast page already in relation to the Braille Sense 6. Uh, Jenny and the team at Salvis have a whole load of videos, and I think the people at Hymns Inc. are creating videos. So there's plenty of resources outside of this session if you want to go and find out more. But we're delighted to be with you for the next five Thursdays. I'm really looking forward to this, and I think it's going to be a great session. 
during the uh, time over the next five weeks, if you want to get in touch with us and email any questions, you can uh, send an email to sales at sightandsound.co.uk and just mark it for Stuart and it will be sent on to me if you have any queries in relation to the course or the content or anything that you want following up with. Or you can also email me directly. You, you would have received my email when you registered uh, for the course. So let's just um, do a bit of um, Zoom management here so that people can, um, can uh, uh, unmute themselves if they wish. And then I'm going to hand over to Jenny in a moment, uh, just one sec. So I'm going to hand over to Jenny and uh, Jenny, I, I suppose. I just, I just wondered, did you want to mention that the training courses that you've already done? That yes. you have already? Good, good idea. We have a, thank you. We have a, a four series training course that we ran in August, which covered email, setting up email. We looked at the dictionary. Um, we looked at Bookshare and we did some work on apps uh, and we also we also did Google Drive. So they're on the Sight and Sound YouTube and Sight and Sound podcast page. And I suppose these, what we're doing now, fed, were, were fed from the courses we ran in August and from a user feedback. And we always want feedback. So do please get in touch with us if we can help. Uh, so uh, Jenny, we're, we're delighted to have you here. I should just add, by the way, if people want to unmute themselves when we get to questions, you'll be able to do that. You can also, if you'd prefer, just raise your hand. Alton Y is the keystroke, or you can press the raise hand button if you're on a mobile device. Or you can also, um, I'm just bringing somebody else in from the waiting room, apologies. So give me one moment while I do that. Um, if you want to, um, if you want to raise your hand, you can press Alt and Y, or you can also type in the chat window if you wish to do that. So again, everybody's very welcome, and we're delighted to see so many people here. So as we said a few minutes ago, this very first session is to introduce you to the differences between the Braille Sense, the older Braille Sense U2 models, and before and the Braille Sense 6. And if you skipped the Polaris, this session is very definitely for you. But uh, even if you didn't and you have questions, uh, this session is for you too. And Jenny, you know, I think when I saw the Polaris, it was probably, it was over three, I think it was the end of 2017. So it's actually quite a while ago. Um, I remember thinking, first of all, when I was navigating through the main menu, oh, there's nothing different about this. It just looks the very same. And then I suddenly <laughs> saw a Play Store. I said, oh, it's new. So uh, the, the fact that, that you switched to Android, that presumably gave you guys a whole load of new possibilities. Uh, it did. So we one of the things that we actually wanted to do on purpose was to give you a consistent interface, to give you what you recognize, but to put it in more modern terms. So not only did it give us the ability to install third-party apps, but we're also able to update things, especially those of you who are coming from the YouTube you probably know that you can almost not really use the browser anymore. Um, you know, again, Wi-Fi protocols. Um, where was I? There was something I was thinking about earlier and I can't even remember what it is. There are a lot of things like that that are so much more modern now. So the, a lot of it's under the hood. So what we tried to do was give you um, a consistent interface, give you programs that you know, um, you know, shortcuts that you know, all of that, we tried not to mess with that too much so that you would be able to use it. Plus, we didn't want you to freak out about Android because there are some differences and definitely doing things on the screen, screen reader side is, you know, slightly different as um, Stuart will demonstrate, you know, throughout this training. But um, most of what's going on or a lot of what's going on is actually under the hood. Um, everything is is faster, it's more robust, it's more, um, everything's more powerful, better performance, um, more modern, like I said, there's, there's a lot less limitations with Android as far as what you can do. So um, I would say, you know, that's, we tried to really balance the two and, and give you the modern, modernity and consistency. Modernity. That was yeah, my and, and and you know, I I think you and I uh, have talked on previous uh, webinars and, and podcasts, and just also uh, to each other about the whole note taker versus computer and what is a note taker these days. And for me, 
the older U2 was probably the classic note taker. And mm -hmm. now you've added a whole load of this is like when I describe the Braille Sense 6 to sighted people in particular, to teachers, I call it a Braille tablet. This is essentially yeah. what it is. Really. Sure. Um, so, I think so. And the, the other interesting thing about this is, you know, you do go through stages. Even Windows does this. You know, for example, yeah. the, you had Vista, which wasn't popular. And then you had Windows 7 that was. Windows 8 wasn't. Windows 10 is good. And I think even the same can be true for hardware. So for us, the Polaris was the first go. Um, but it was the same way. The, the Braille Sense Plus was the first go. Then the U2, as you said, was like the gold standard. And then, of course, we had the same thing where we had the Polaris was the first go. But I think now with the Braille Sense 6, we've really arrived. And it is interesting that a lot of people are doing this leap from the U2 um, to the Braille Sense 6. And I think that's it's a valid path that's kind of interesting. The other thing that that will go through and what what is interesting is that we've brought a lot of the U2 popular U2 standard things back in the Braille Sense 6 that were not in the Polaris. So uh, this yeah, is a really like great the, like the 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 um the uh the macros database. Well, the person, the, oh, the database yeah database exactly yeah we have the macros in the polaris, polaris but we have the right. yeah. manager yeah. the document reader the web radio wiki search all of these things were actually in the youtube but we're not in polaris so one question people would probably have is you get a you're you're working away with your youtube for many years quite happily and then you switch to Braille Sense 6 getting your data exported, maybe you have lots of data that you want to get safely onto the six. How would people go about that? Have you any strategies to help? Well, the unfortunate part is that there's no one way. Um, it depends on what you are doing. Um, and you, you may actually need to contact support to sort of get you through some of this because there are a lot of different things that you need to do. Um, to back up your data, that's easy. Obviously, you can just back up, you know, everything on the flash disk and and bring it in. Um, you will, of course, have to set up your email accounts and you know your Wi-Fi and all of that. Um, we've always told you with the YouTube that if you back up your database folder, everything comes with it. Well, unfortunately, because this is a change in operating system, you're not going to be able to do that directly. Um, so this is a really complicated question to answer. So the first question, the first answer is for your data, it's it's just a simple copy and paste. That's not a big deal. You can use an SD card, a USB drive, whatever you know you want. So there's no problem there. Where it gets a little more complicated, uh, let's say email, for example, we have an option. Actually, I'll just show you real fast. The file manager F. Um, I'll go to email. Unread. One attached. Okay, and I'm going to file, go to file. F, write new message, import, export, DML, oh. import, DML, I, dialog backspace, I menu item. Right there. So if you copy your EML folders, you know that um, on the YouTube, you can actually see them directly. If you copy them to your flash disk of your Braille Sense 6, you can use this import email function and it will import those EML messages into the current mailbox. Um, that you're in in your email. So that's one thing to know. Um, another thing to know, let's say like your database, uh, if you have old databases, if you have uh, contacts, you can export to CSV in the address manager. You can also do this in the database manager. Of course, these have the import from CSV functions, so you can move things in that way. Now, the other thing though too, is to know like for appointments and contacts, if you have something that syncs with your Google account already, when you log into that on the Braille Sense 6, it's automatically going to come in. You actually don't need to import it. It will automatically synchronize as long as you have it set to do that, and it will by default. So some things are simpler. Some things are a little more complicated. I suppose it depends on what kind of data you're trying to um, import. Some of it does have to be set up manually, but, but a lot of it you really can bring in, even with a different operating system. I don't know if that answers your question. It's a, no, it's a not, it, it does. It's, it's not, not easy, a simple yeah. answer. Um, but I like your, your mention of the synchronizing data. Um, because certainly I found that very useful. I signed into my uh, Microsoft Office 365 account on my Browson 6 and all my contacts sync with my phone. And now if I update a contact on the Browse Sense, it gets updated on the phone and everywhere else. So that cloud synchronization is now available 
on the Braille Sense 6, which is fantastic. Yeah, and it's we uh, we support Exchange email, but we don't support Exchange calendar, etc. But there's a little interesting workaround for that too. Um, if you install like something like the Outlook app, the Android app, all you have to do is sign into your account and it'll bring it all in. So even though we might not be able to do it with our applications, you don't even have to really work hard to get it, um, you know, from other sources and it'll still bring it in. Okay, so could you, I, I thought one of the things we might do was to would be go through the the main menu of the six so that people might see what has changed or what might be different if they were coming from the U2. Okay, so a lot of this is going to look familiar. Um, some of it is just arranged differently. So we'll start this. A file manager, F. So we have the file manager. Um, one thing to point out is that we are not using Eloquence anymore. Um, the, we, we are using Vocalizer TTS. Unfortunately, Code Factory does not make Eloquence available anymore. If you have had another Android device and you've been fortunate enough to have purchased it and it's in your library, you can still get it. But that's a, a disappointment for some people and something that you should be aware of. We do have many, many voices. Um, so this is just the one that I'm choosing to use. This is not the default, in fact. Um, however, it is different. So just be aware of that, that unfortunately, unfortunately, eloquence is not part of the original package. Okay, so we have the file manager. Word processor. Word w. processor. Notepad, N. And we have uh, the notepad, which is our second, uh, second text editor. Uh, we have split things up. Let's see. Can't, I can't even remember. So I've got a U2 here too. So we're going to check. Word processor, W. Okay. There's no, so um, at the beginning of the menu here on the U2, we have the file, file manager. manager. F, word processor, document reader, K, email, E. So these are the main programs at the top. Um, here we have this notepad, which is the second text editor. The word processor in the U or in the Braille Sense 6 handles things um, a little bit more advanced. We can uh, have a real slide view of PowerPoint, for example. Uh, we can deal with formatted doc and docx files. So we have a second uh, text editor called the notepad that deals with like text and BRF and PDF, which converts to text on open and EPUB, et cetera. So that's what this notepad is. Email E. We have email, which in addition to IMAP and POP3 also supports Exchange, Microsoft Exchange. Media M. We have our media menu. Now in this media menu. Media player M. We have the media player. FM radio R. We have the FM radio. Podcasts P. And podcasts. So you'll notice two things. One, um, the podcast app is different and unique. Uh, the second thing is that the Daisy player is not here. Uh, so we'll get to that in a moment. Task name, email, oh. file manager, F. Just a second, sorry. We're no that. media, M. Books, K. So under media, we now have a books menu. Daisy player, D. So the, this is where the Daisy player now goes. Document reader, K. We also have a similar document reader to what you used to have in the U2, and that is here. Online Daisy, O. We have our online Daisy. Bookshare download, B. And we do have a similar uh, Bookshare download application. And again, this actually is new to the Braille Sense 6. It was not in Polaris. Neither was the document reader. So for those of you who are actually moving now, in some ways, it's actually more similar um, to what you have now than if you went from U2 to Polaris. So this is kind of interesting. Daisy player, D, books, K, okay. organizer, O. We have our organizer. Address manager, A. And this is going to be exactly the same. We have the address manager. Schedule manager, Schedule S, manager, database manager, D. And the database manager. And again, that was not in Polaris, but is now been has now been brought to the Braille Sense 6. Address organizer, O. Uh, web tools, B. Okay, our web tools. Web browser, B. We have our web browser. Google search, G. We have our Google search. Wiki search, W. And the wiki search. Um, 
which some of our Polaris users don't actually know, originated in the U2 as well. So um, again, that was not in Polaris, but is in the Braille Sense 6. Web browser, B, web tools, extras, X. Okay, our extras Excel menu. Viewer, X. We still have our Excel viewer. Sense dictionary, D. The Sense dictionary. Now, this is a new thing in that in the Braille Sense 6, this is provided free of charge. We have US and UK English, as well as a thesaurus. And we also have uh, Spanish, Italian, and French bilingual dictionaries. And any of these are available on uh, all units. So color reader, C. We also have a color reader. This is something for those of you who have used our Blaze uh, products. This is similar to what's on the Blaze. Color reader, C. Ex extras. So that's X. extras. Um, programs are. We do have a programs menu. We have um, we do have the Sense Bible. It is now available for both uh, Polaris and with this next release, it'll also be available for the Braille Sense 6. So if you have that, we have a programs menu. We also have a couple of uh, developers who have the SDK, uh, a, a developer kit, and have created uh, a couple of other applications. If they're, they're not quite available yet, but they will be, and those would also appear in the programs menu if you decided to take advantage of those. Utilities, U. We have our utilities menu. Calculator, C. Our calculator. Real sense math, M. This is something new. This is actually a graphics calculator. Display time and date, D. Okay. World clock, O. That's also something new. It's a very simple application that just allows you to um, enter multiple time zones so you can easily check the time in, uh, in different locales, which I need all the time considering my job. Display compass heading, A, wake up alarm, A, stopwatch, W, terminal for screen reader, at display network status, display power status, backup restore flash disk, K. This is another new little utility that lets you easily back up and restore your flash disk. And uh, we also back up the database manager, although you, or sorry, the database folder. So although you cannot, um, take the information from your U2 to your Braille Sense 6. Once you have put everything in the Braille Sense 6, it's very easy to back up, let's say your Wi-Fi profiles, your account settings, your various options. It's so much is stored in the, uh, you know, things like language profiles um, are stored in the database folder, um, macros that you create as well. So there's a lot of information in there. So the backup restore flash disks backs up not only your files and data, but it backs up your um, database folder, which gives you all this. It makes it very, very easy if you need to reset the unit or something. Format F. Okay, format. Sleep timer Sleep J. Timer. Macro manager R. Macro manager. Upgrade Braille Sense firmware. U. Upgrade Braille Sense firmware okay. U. Cap utilities U. So uh, most of that is the same. It's going to be familiar. So I'm, I'm not going through everything. Settings there. S. Okay. And our set time and date T. Okay. Again. Set up internet, Bluetooth manager, menu manager, M. All this Backup, is... restore Braille sense settings, K. Change device name, D. Quick start guide, Q. And we do have a quick start guide uh, that you can easily get to and reset various settings, various Braille sense settings. Uh, this comes up usually when you first receive your unit and also a lot of times after an upgrade. Password protection, A. And we have password protection, that's in the Initialize Braille sense options, voice options, V. Okay, so this is a new thing because you're able to download uh, several voices, both from Vocalizer, which comes on the unit, but you can also install third-party voices from the Play Store. So. Um, you're basically able to use anything that's available. As I explained about eloquence, you may not have a, you may have a little difficulty getting hold of that if you haven't purchased it before. But anything that's available, you're able to for Android. You're able to install it and use it here. Language profiles L. And here's our language profiles. Real sense global options O. Okay, and we specify that it's Braille Sense Global Options because we want to be sure to differentiate between that and the Android options. Android Backup Reset, R. There's Android Backup Reset. Android System Settings, E. And this is all basically the Android Global Options, but they call it Android System Settings. Android System Settings, So e. that's our settings. Set Time and Settings, Help, H. Now, the Help, um, let me go through the rest of the menu, then I'll talk about Help. Play Store, P. Okay. All Apps, A. Information about the Braille Sense, I. Okay, so we have now some, uh, so the all apps, if I go, I'm gonna all go apps back up here. A, a Polyvision. 
Okay, so this is basically just an alphabetical list of all of the Android apps that I have installed. So this is how you get to the uh, third party Android apps. It does come with normal things like uh, Google Chrome and calculator, calendar, contacts, you know, the stock uh, Google Android applications are included when you receive it. And then of course, you can log into your Google account on the Play Store, which you saw about that, and uh, download other applications. Hey, let me- Task name, email, file manager. Uh, sorry about that. So the other thing I wanna talk a little bit about is the help because it's very, very different. In the U2, you basically have a bunch of TXT files um, and you, it's not very navigable. You have a, a, a table of contents, but you don't, you're not able to directly get to anything. And this has been a frustration. Um, in the Polaris and the Braille Sense 6, you now have navigable help. Actually, I'm going to show that really quick. Is that okay, Stuart? Absolutely. All right. Help Just docs open. Navigation menu dialog. Welcome to Braille Sense help. Press space H to get a list of keystrokes for navigation. Introduction 117 list item. So now I'm placed in a list of all the various options. So I can uh, press space four. Basic functions of customizing your note file manager four seven word processor five seven, notepad six seventeen list item. So any of you who have seen the user manual, this also looks very similar to how the U2 manual is structured. But what's nice about this now, I can tab forward with F3. This is the notepad section. File menu one six list item. I have all the subsections mm -hmm. of the note edit menu to set, insert menu go to menu force read menu five six list item now if i want to go to any of these sections i can just press enter 6.5 read menu and here i am right at it mm -hmm. so this the entire manual is completely navigable but it's also still a whole document so even from here if i wanted to use like uh space f to find a certain amount of text with, from within the whole manual, I can do that. So this is super flexible in that um, I can search the whole manual for something, but I can also get to this navigation and um, navigate the entire thing uh, instead of having different sections for each chapter and each subject. So it's, it's navigable as a whole, and it's actually navigable in that you can actually press enter. Instead of just seeing the table of contents, you can actually press enter and go to the specific section. So that is a serious improvement on uh, the, the YouTube. Jenny, thanks a million. The, the one thing I just wanted to as well mention, and we do have a session, we did do a session on this in August, it's on our podcast page for anyone who's interested, is Google Drive on the Polaris and Braille Sense 6. If people haven't had the, have skipped the U2, from the U2 to 6, you will find Google Drive really useful. It's so well um, integrated, I suppose, into the file manager. It's really good. Yep. You just see it um, in your in your drive list. It just appears like the flash disk or an SD card or anything. So you can copy your files onto the Google Drive. And obviously, if you have anything um, on Google Drive already, you can move them back to the to the Braille Sense 6, which is really handy. Yep. Um, OK, thank you, Jenny, for taking us on, on a tour. So I suppose from, from the perspective of new users, people switching over to this thing, the user interface is still the same. Um, they'll just have all this extra functionality and you, you said a lot faster processor as well. Yes, everything is faster. Um, everything is using modern protocols, but we did try to do our best to keep the interface as consistent as possible so that you know what to do. You don't have to relearn everything. The thing that you'll have to relearn, there, there are a couple of things I think that throw people. Of course, the Android side is going to be different, um, which you guys will, will talk about later, so I won't really go into a lot of detail. We do have a mobile screen reader that we created uh, that runs on top of sort of, it's, it's using the Google accessibility platform, but we have a few extra things like first letter navigation, top and bottom navigation, um, et cetera. So, um, this is actually, uh, what was I saying? The mobile screen reader. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, and Android apps, of course, the other thing about them is that they're only as good as their accessibility, their inherent accessibility. We can't 
I was going to say we can't make things accessible that aren't, but we do actually have a graphics labeler. So in some ways, that's that's not as true anymore um, with the Braille Sense 6 especially. And Android has an excellent uh, graphics labeler that has managed to make a lot of things that didn't used to be accessible accessible. But for the most part, you know, there are things. <sighs> so sorry, that's my. <laughs> I have too many gadgets. Um, <laughs> things are talking to me. Uh, I didn't even realize it was mine for a second. Okay, um, it is 4 a.m. I'm sorry, I'm I'm really scatterbrained this early in the morning. So the mobile screen reader, we um, that's gonna be one thing that's different. The other thing I think that throws people, you know, well, in the US, it would be things like Bard Mobile. Um, There's some things, okay, say YouTube, um, Twitter, things that we used to do on the U2. As, you, as we went through the menus, you probably noticed that we're not doing those things anymore. There's no Dropbox, there's no, and we don't do that because if an app is available and accessible, we try to spend our time making things that aren't. Like we know we need a specialized text editor. That's just never gonna be easier than the things that we create. Um, but there are lots of easy ways to access Dropbox, you know, not only the Dropbox app, there's something called Drop Sync. And, you know, again, I'm not going to expect you to know everything that I'm talking about, but this is the thing. There are different ways that you're going to handle mainstream services. Um, this is, and this is one of the things that does sometimes throw people because they're like, why can't I just have my simple interface? There are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is that, you know, we do try to do things that are not available. The second thing is that um, these services, if you remember when you used your U2, they would a lot of times go out um, because something would happen and they would update it and then it didn't work for us. So then we'd have to do a firmware update, blah, blah, blah. So by using the Android apps instead, we avoid that issue because we're always, everything's always up to date. And so it's actually a more consistent use case for you. And it's also usually a little more powerful because you don't have to wait for us to try to make um, our interfaces on top of what's available. You're getting it directly from the providers like Twitter or YouTube or, so you have a lot more functionality actually. The interface is gonna be a little different. You are gonna have to get used to it, but the functionality is, it's first of all, it's always going to be up to date, and second, it's a lot more powerful. Yeah, and just when you mentioned uh, the drop sync there, I used because we use OneDrive at Sight and Sound, and I've <clears throat> discovered an app called OneSync. We'll talk a lot more about apps on the last night. We've discovered an app called OneSync. I think Jenny, you had mentioned it to me originally. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Absolutely yeah. brilliant. So you can just copy things into folders on the Browse Sense Six, and it automatically syncs with your OneDrive, and it's all very seamless. So. If you look around, and as Jenny said, just like I guess any apps on on um, platforms like this, there um, you know you, you some some will work very well, some won't work as well, and you may have to dig around, and some might work at all because the app developers haven't built accessibility in. So uh, okay, so we're very keen to take some questions. Um, if you'd like to raise your hand, you can do Alt and Y or you can type in the chat with Alton H. And Daniel has asked for clarification on the sync app. It's called One Sync. That's all one word, O-N-E Sync. Um, it'll pop up on Google, on, on the Play Store, rather. Uh, if, you'd like to, if you'd like to raise your hand, uh, you can uh, do so with Alton Y. Um, or if you'd like to type in the chat, you can do so with Alton H. And we'll happily unmute you, and you can ask your questions, all the hard questions for Jenny. <laughs> one um, thing before I start taking questions, one other thing I wanted to mention that I haven't covered, and I can't believe I didn't. Um, one of the other things about having the Braille Sense 6 is uh, the amount of peripherals you can connect. And I, I kind of forget about this because, you know, if you're coming from Polaris, but if you're coming from YouTube, this is a seriously big deal. Um, <clears throat> in fact, right now, I'm using Zoom on my Braille Sense 6. I have a USB mixer connected. So I have everything. I'm not using a PC. I'm doing everything on the Braille Sense 6. And I even have my YouTube 
connected to the same mixer. Document reader. So A. you can actually hear both. Um, I have something called loopback going on. So you're able to hear, you know, my uh, my Braille Sense 6. So yeah, I'm actually doing this modern stuff. I can share my screen uh, so I could show you visually. I didn't um, because I don't, I don't think there's anyone that I needed to, um, but I can do that. I can even show a video. Um, I've done that actually before on a webinar for Sight and Sound. So I can connect mixers. The other thing I can do is I can take videos because I can connect to USB cameras. Um, there are just, you know, I can connect to USB hubs and do all kinds of different things. The possibilities for enhancement are just amazing because the amount of peripherals supported. Um, the other thing to know is that with both Polaris and Braille Sense 6, you can also show a full picture via a, a monitor. On the U2, you cannot. You might know that it's just basically showing what's on your Braille display. You actually can do a full graphical picture. So if you need to share, uh, work with a colleague or just show someone or ask someone something about what's going on, um, it's very, very easy to do that. We support USB portable monitors and just various things. So that's the other thing you get by upgrading to Android and specifically to Braille Sense 6 is just a ton of peripheral support. That's that's just not even thought about on the U2. Okay, we got a message from Daniel uh, who was just saying if it was possible to see the screen because he is sighted and I know Daniel well. But actually, Daniel, you've missed nothing in terms of not seeing because we were just going through the main menu. So once we get into the nitty gritty of podcasts and all that next week, I'll make sure to share my screen as well. And we've uh, one or two more people who've joined us just in the last couple of minutes as well. So you're all very welcome. We've kind of finished. Jenny's done a thorough uh, demo of the main menu and explained a lot of uh, the differences between the U2 and the Braille Sense 6 if you've skipped the upgrade of the Polaris and moved straight to the Braille Sense 6, then there are some of the changes. But now we're happy to throw it open to everybody. Um, we're happy to open it up to everybody who anybody who has questions. So if you'd like to raise your hand, Alton Y, and we will uh, bring you on to have a chat. And we'd love to hear your experiences of using the Braille Sense 6, if you are already. I know there's, a, see, I recognize a couple of names of people who I think are using the Braille Sense 6. Did you come from a U2? Did you come from a Polaris? What are you doing with it? What do you, what do you like about it? Um, any feedback you'd like to give to Jenny? I'm sure she'd be delighted to hear it. Um, so raise your hand, Alton Y to raise your hand, Alton H, if you want to chat. And quick reminder that next week we will be looking at podcasts. The you, If you saw when Jenny was in the media menu, there was a, a podcast uh, application, which Jenny, I, I, I think I'm correct in saying, because there's probably Braille Sense 6 users on the call who are saying, I don't see that in my Braille Sense. It's not with those guys just yet, or it's not. <laughs> no. So we are very, very close to releasing this. So we're, we're going ahead and demoing it, um, but it is still in beta. So let's see, what is in the, the backup restore flash disk is in the new version. The podcast app is in the new version. Um, uh, the support for the Sense Bible is going to be in the new version. I know there are five things. Um, I'm just not thinking, oh, the document reader is also new to uh, version, I don't know what we're going to call it for sure. I don't think we've decided yet, but um, yeah, this next upgrade is actually pretty significant um, as far as some of the things. We've also made uh, camera support a little bit easier so that we're able to um, support things like Canopy Reader with external cameras. And so we've got a lot coming up in this new update. Okay, brilliant. And the update will be, will be, will be there soon. Yeah, I think a matter of weeks. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so we have an, uh, an raised hand from um, Eden. I hope I, gosh, I hope I pronounced your name. Yeah, Eden, you definitely so. got my name right. <laughs> brilliant. So you're welcome. And uh, good to have you here. You're from the from the US, I, I think, I guess. I am in the US. I'm in, I'm in uh, Vancouver, Washington. Good. How can we help you? Well, I don't know. I am a new Braille Sense 6 user, but definitely not a new HEMS product user. I had a U2 for years and I had tried the Polaris, <clears throat> like briefly, 
and it was really slow. And I'm like, oh, I was really disappointed. And but then I got a hold of a loaner of the Braille Sense 6. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've got to have this. And um, so far, I'm really enjoying it super fast. I can even do um, I do chat work. I, I uh, do readings online, like psychic readings. And I work on a chat app and um, a lot of times it would make errors. Um, when I had my Q Braille, it would make errors with my iPhone because of, you know, editing and stuff. And it's, it's so much improved. So I'm really happy. Although I will say that even with the uh, connection to the iPhone, I thought my Q Braille did reasonably well. But I, I noticed that with the sense, the Braille Sense 6, it makes a lot less errors also so now my cube rail has pretty much been relegated to the computer <laughs> okay so you're liking the braille sense six and i eight. am but here is one question i have and i feel stupid i am i had downloaded motweet when i borrowed a um a loaner unit and i managed to install it but for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to do it again. I know there's some setting, but I can't find it and don't know how to fix it. Like that you have to allow apps to sideload. Oh, um, actually, though, it should give you that option right there. Um, hmm, so maybe when... I have a corrupted file because um, when I click, if I put it in my files folder, like I got it out of Dropbox where I had it and I put it in my um file manager and all I did was hit enter and it's like it did nothing <laughs> uh okay so uh, that I don't know maybe I have a corrupted file um maybe I need to find another download and downloading so it should give me that option yeah it should actually say um something about you have to give permissions and it'll give you the options to the option to go to settings where you're able to enable that yeah permission. I so, thought I remember um, that. Maybe I just have a corrupted file and maybe I'll try it again with that or the Kindle file because um, I had downloaded both on my uh, loaner unit and it was fine because, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of I don't so much enjoy. I I listened to your webinar about tweeting, so I was trying to do that. And, and that's oh, that's the other interesting thing. On tweetings, um, when you mentioned going to the settings, when I try to go into the settings, it jumps around and only like shows me two or three different categories of settings and, and then like throws me completely out. <laughs> um, I haven't tried it recently. Um, oh, because maybe I, there's a problem. Yeah. Maybe that's what it, maybe <laughs> there, that's what I was wondering because I could have sworn I had looked at it a long time ago with the braille note touch and it wasn't doing that so and it didn't look anything like what you said so that's why i was gonna ask you <laughs> okay so of, of course there are um, yeah apps, you know when i know when apps update you know we don't know yep. every oh app i know update. i know no no complaints this is not okay. a complaint at all i know no, this I, is I'm not taking it that way i so when you're in a list of something like that, like your settings, you said you can only see two or three, one mm -hmm. way to get past it is to use um, space 345 is the page down. So if for oh. some reason it's not navigating you through the list and you need to actually, you, you have to be in the list area, but if mm -hmm. you try it with that, you might be able to get to the additional settings. That oh, you are okay. I'll try, I'll try that and see what happens. Um, I wasn't sure if that would make it, it didn't seem like it should be long enough of a list that it would do that but um i will try and see that makes some sense so thank you um like i said otherwise it's um it's a great unit i look forward to the update um because the one thing i do notice is i, I could have sworn the web radio on the youtube used to show me the artist name and title is that not a thing or am i imagining that um we fixed that in the beta Oh, okay. I can't so, wait. Eden, I'm yeah. going to, because we have a few more hands yeah. raised. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks, okay. Thanks. okay, brilliant. No, that was Eden. Um, I'm going to go to Kerry Greenfield, and then we're going to go to Matthew Horsepool. So Kerry's in New Zealand, and Matthew, of course, is in the UK. Uh, so Kerry, you uh, should be able to unmute yourself. Oh, am I still muted? Okay. Um, I, uh, no, we oh, can we can hear, you, hear now. you now. We have you. Okay. Okay, well, we did. Um, can, can you hear me now? We can, yeah. Yep. Okay, I noticed with the Sense Bible, it's it seems to be different on the 
Polaris than the U2 one in some ways, like some of the abbreviations are different. And um, I'm just wondering, uh, can you please explain more about the differences? Um, I, I mean, we've updated it, yeah, and we've cleaned it up, but that's really all we've oh, done. Yeah. There aren't any major oh, okay. differences. Um, I don't think that, like the book abbreviations and stuff, those should be the same. Um, but you're right. Some of the menus are a little different. We, I mean, that the Sense Bible, the original one was created like 10 years ago. So we did try to clean it up and make it a little bit more consistent, a little bit easier um, to make the, the window movement make sense. And just, we just tried to, like I said, make, make things a little bit more updated and, and a little more consistent. Yes, thank you, Jenny. I'm looking forward to the one on the BS6. It'll be really cool because I found yes. some of the Android Bible apps aren't as accessible. Oh no, they're not. They're definitely not as easy to use. We had so many requests for that for the Sense Bible. Um, yeah, if you if you have used it on Polaris, it'll be the same on Braille Sense Six, except it just is faster. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I just got another question, if that's okay. Sure. Yep. Um, I love the way the U2 records, you know, with the built-in mic, it just sounds so clear. And, and I noticed when the Polaris first came out, the recordings were lovely, but very faint. And then with the upgrade, they were a lot louder, but could get distorted. And then I've noticed with the BS6, the recordings are really nice, but a little bit faint. Um, are you going to bring in um, like media settings so that we can alter the mic decibels and yes. a few more things? Yes. So um, in the next release and also in beta. So first of all, we fixed some of the, you probably hear, um, there's a noise cancellation filter that's that's kind of really active. We've turned that off. We also give you mic volume options. I have to say though, with the Braille Sun 6, because it does support USB microphones, I actually prefer to use external stuff because there's so much available. Um, something like the Zoom AM7, for example, is a USB-C mic that's it's a totally pocket mic. But I like something like that because it's just, I think it's it's quieter. It's got a lot of different settings. So I love, if I'm going to do a lot with audio, I actually prefer to use external stuff. But yeah, you're right. This is going to improve quite a bit in your next release in, in a few weeks. I think Jenny, Thank it's you worth very flagging. Much, Jenny. And it's worth flagging a podcast Jenny did a while ago where she explored a whole rake of external peripherals, uh, including <laughs> yes, several mics. It's really, really good. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that too. So I think if anyone's wanting to look at what external mics work on there, and you went through a whole load of price points as well, Jenny, which was really helpful, I think, for people. Uh, Kerry, thank you for your question and thanks for coming along. Thank you, Stuart. Okay, that was Kerry. And now we're going to go to Matthew, who is in the UK. So hopefully you can, have we got, we got you, Matthew? Yes, indeed. Good evening, Stuart. Good evening, Jenny. Good evening, everyone. Um, Jenny, I met you very briefly at Site Village London just before the uh, lockdown. So it's, um, it's, it's good, to, <laughs> good, to be, uh, good to be here. Um, so were you with Dave Williams? Was, yes, was those guys you? were doing the with, podcast. I was with yeah. Dave Williams. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. I do remember you. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Um, anyway, yeah. So I'm here because, um, dare I say it, I was a humanware user for a long time, as in, you know, <laughs> right the way from from Braille Companion, right the way through to the Braille Note Apex, and never went to the Braille Note Touch because I like the Apex too much. And uh, so, really, the Braille Sense Six I bought to replace my Braille Note Apex, and I'm trying to use it like a Braille Note Apex, and of course, it's not working because it's because uh, <laughs> it's not a Braille Note Apex. So I've got some adjustments to learn, which I'll yeah. learn in my own time and, and kind of feel my way through. Um, but there's one thing I've somehow managed to do, and I have no idea how I've managed to do it, and it's actually quite a showstopper. I've somehow managed to set an alarm for a very early time in the morning, oh, no. and. Um, and it keeps ringing and I've been through every setting in the book and cannot figure out how to turn it off, which means I can't leave the thing charged because it wakes me up early in the morning. Do you have any idea how I might have done it and how on earth to turn this alarm off? Uh, okay, so there's nothing actually in your alarm app, right? Well, I, I haven't quite worked out how to get to the alarm app, I don't think. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in, in the, the battery's flat at the moment so that it doesn't wake me up tomorrow morning. <laughs> 
Um, no, in the file manager. So F. if you go to the utilities menu, calculator, C. Uh, there's alarm. Real set display time, world clock, display compass, and wake up alarm, A. Here. And if you have, when you press enter here, no items list item. I have none. Um, but if you have alarms set and they're in here, it should list them. The only problem is that's not the only place where you might be getting this. Um, oh. The other thing that you might have, it could be related to some appointment in your calendar. Um, so one thing to do, if you go file manager, F, I'm going to address go to the manager, A, schedule calendar, manager. Friday, October 5th. Okay. So I've opened up the schedule manager and it's giving me, uh, the calendar view. Um, if you do, oh, hang on. Oh, I always forget. What? Ah, add sorry. appointment. I, I don't even dialogue know what I'm doing. I menu. Search appointments, search appointments, dialog. Search date, Friday, October 5th. Okay, so you can search uh, your appointments. And if you search by subject, you can search by date or by subject. If you search by subject and you press enter, it will show you all of the appointments in your calendar. So there may be something, some recurring appointment that you don't remember or you don't know, but that might I mean, be one might way be. to find it. I don't imagine yeah, I don't there imagine, is. I don't know. <laughs> Like, it could yeah, be something I, that's yeah. synchronized from something else too. Um, it's it's really hard to know, but that's not a normal occurrence. I can tell you. No, that. I'm sure it isn't, and it's very frustrating. But yeah, okay, I'll I'll go and look at some of that stuff. I don't suppose if it is synchronized from somewhere else, I don't suppose you know how to figure that out and, and stop it from uh, synchronizing or delete what's been synchronized. Yeah, you can. <clears throat> um, so that's why if you want to search. Um, your calendar. And like I said, if you search by subject and just press enter, it'll list all of the appointments in your calendar. So if you find it, then yeah, you can delete it. And you have the option of deleting like the current one or the, the whole recurrence, the whole series. Um, yeah, so you okay. should be able to get rid of it if you can locate it. I mean, it, it says it's an alarm and it definitely says it's an alarm. I, so I, I'm not convinced it's from the calendar, but I'll, I'll have a look because at this point, anything's better than what I've managed to do so far. That's so strange. Wow. Um, but yeah, if it's in, if it's an actual alarm, it should show up in your um, alarm okay. program. In yeah. the, as soon as you open it, it should give you um, the list of the uh, the alarms that are set. Yeah. Is there an Android clock? It would would that have like if I if I've accidentally set an alarm through Google Assistant or something like that, which I don't think okay. I have. But if I do that, will that show up in the alarms app? Sure. Um, not in the alarms app, but in the calendar. Either way, it will sound yes. Um, and I've had that happen to me where uh, I set up, I logged into something like Outlook and uh, it was giving me alarms for appointments that I didn't remember synchronizing. And I, that's how I figured out that it would do that. So um, yes, that is definitely possible. That's what I'm saying. It could have synchronized from something okay. else, but in that case, you'll find it in the calendar. I'll have a look. Is it easy to tell whether a calendar's got an alarm attached to it? Because I mean, everything's got reminders, right? So reminders are not the same as alarms, I guess. Mm, um, yes, you can. So if you check the appointment information, it will tell you that there's an alarm like 10 minutes before and you can modify the appointment and turn that off. So When the alarm goes off, does it not tell you what it's Yeah, doesn't it tell you what it's for? No, but this is what I mean. It's not. It's not a reminder. It's not going ding a ling and then stopping. It's going ding ling 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 until the battery dies or until I stop it. But like I can't. Yeah, it, it's a proper alarm. It's not a. Well, then it's that's, not a reminder. that's that's definitely in the, the alarms app. In I think so. I think, I think that's definitely in there. Yeah, if it was a reminder, I'd sleep through it. <laughs> well, you might with the with the uh, the cuckoo sound it makes. I don't know. You might, you might, but I think that's a, that's in the clock. That's in the alarm. Uh, that's true. It, it's it's going cuckoo, 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 but it's a very consistent night. Because, night because the cuckoo, up. if it's a calendar, will tell you pop up a little thing what the appointment is for. Right. Um, yeah. It'll and it'll you'll see it on the braille display too. So it'll say like right. But you know. But does it keep minute. going or does it stop after yeah. a bit? Well, it depends on how you have it set, um, but usually, yeah, it'll it'll um, sound a few times. So it'll go for like a minute, and then it'll wait, and then it'll it'll do it again. So yeah, it's I mean, it's just a matter of figuring out what it is. But either way, you should be able to get rid of it. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, I'll stop hogging the floor in a second. But I'm a bit confused then about is there a, a so because on the iPhone, um, a calendar will pop up a reminder, 
and it is just a reminder. So can I make it do a reminder instead of an alarm or is the, will it always do an alarm if there's a reminder set? Yeah, I don't think it does always sound an alarm. It's okay. true. Um, what so, you there, can... so for every appointment on my calendar that I've got a reminder so that my phone will sound the reminder, I'll, <laughs> I'll get an alarm on, the, uh, is, on but... the braille sense. Yes, but you can change like the sound. Uh, you can have it just do a vibration. So you, you can basically, so yes, you can change that. If you change what they call the alarm bell, um, you could change it to just do a vibration or, you know, various things. So it doesn't actually keep doing that. So okay, I guess it's all configurable. And I'm that's sorry, handy. this is so not an easy question. It's super configurable. So. So where is the setting? And I'll, then I'll leave you alone. Where's the setting for the alarm bell? Because I think that this may be the problem. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Toggle search mode. Ask, sorry. Enter if there's anybody uh, else with hands up, I'm really sorry. No, there's nobody at the moment anyway, Matthew, so you're... Uh... <laughs> uh, Cancel. Hang on. Search date, Friday, solar calendar, Friday, add appointment, I, dial okay, enter, so I, item. If you're in your schedule manager and you go in the menu, you've got search appointment, delete all calendar setting, print appointments, save appointment, set date and time, set alarm options, set backup oh, options. Okay. Set, oh, set option. alarm options, yeah, that so, would be a good place to look. Yeah. Set alarm options dialog, and then type of echo, bell radio button. So okay. there it is. I can, I can probably yeah. figure it from there. I can, yeah. oh, sorry, that will so teach me to look in the Friday. menus before I ask for help. Then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can, no, I can fathom it from there. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Sorry to hog the floor for so long. No, thanks for the question, Matthew. I think it's a good, I hope you don't get woken up tomorrow by your, uh, your alarm. <laughs> so do I, I'll put sorted. it on charge. And if I get woken up, I should be sending an email saying, this Send an email, <laughs> with, uh, yeah, let us know if it didn't fix. Yeah, tell us definitely. Oh, brilliant. Okay, thanks, thanks Matthew, much. cheers. Okay. Um, Last chance, if anyone has any questions, if you want to raise your hand, uh, if you'd like to ask anything, we really appreciate people sticking around for the last hour. Uh, I hope it's been useful for you, our first session. Please come back next week because we're going to talk about podcasts. And we'll make sure to give Matthew's Brailist podcast a big shout and Jenny's podcast, of course, as well. Um, and if you have a favorite yes. podcast, tell us about it next week. So last chance yes, for hand. You. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, so we, yeah, we do have a podcast uh, uh, actually, and most of many things are covering Braille Sense 6. Um, it's called SenseCast. It's actually just uh, our international podcast from HIMSS. Uh, as I said, a lot of things uh, are recently about Braille Sense 6. We'll be doing another podcast on the update. And when Stuart shows you the podcast app next week, SenseCast is actually one of the defaults. However, you can easily delete it. So not a problem if you're, you can delete any of the defaults. But um, just if there's something, again, that's another resource as far as getting more information about Braille Sense 6. Um, as Stuart mentioned, we do have a YouTube channel. Hims Inc. has a YouTube channel. So um, again, many, many resources available to you. Thanks, Jenny. And thanks, Daniel, for your nice message in chat. Daniel's thanking, thanking us. So thanks very much, Daniel. Uh, John Gallagher uh, says thanks a million. John still has a Gmail problem, but John, there being, I think we might have good news on that very soon. So um, could we st sit tight, I think, for a little while, because it might be very good news very soon. Uh, that's it for the first session. Jenny, thank you so much. 5 a.m. for you, so get some more rest. And Jenny will be back with us on our last session on the 11th of November. You're going to come back? Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Absolutely. We're looking forward to having you back. Join us again next week, uh, Thursday night. Uh, 21st of October, when we're going to be talking about podcasts, that's at 8 p.m. Uh, here in Ireland and in the UK. And we look forward to talking to you then and have a nice evening or in the case of uh, our friends in New Zealand, have a good day. And Jenny, get some rest before you have to get up again. And thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks so much for having Thanks me. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.